Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah and day 15 of the Halloween Craft Countdown where I'm sharing 20 Halloween themed Cricut projects in 20 days. 10 of the projects are designed by me and 10 are guest projects from some of my crafting friends. At the end of the Halloween Craft Countdown last year I sent out a survey and one of the questions was what designs would you like to see next year? One of the most suggested designs was a stone gargoyle so here he is. I love his little grumpy expression. He looks like he's trying to be all big and scary, but really, I think he's a big softy at heart. The files for this project are free for the next 24 hours. Here's how to download them. Register a free ticket for the Halloween Craft Countdown at craftwithsarah.com forward slash HCC 23. If you're already registered, check for an email from me with subject line Halloween Craft Countdown ticket information or any of the other emails from me that you've been sent throughout the countdown. Can't find them? Check your junk or spam box to see if they've gone there by mistake. These emails contain the link to view the countdown projects and download today's files. Scroll down this page to find today's project. Click the button to start the files automatically downloading to your computer or mobile device. Each download is only available for free for 24 hours after it goes live. If you've missed some, check out the Instant Access Bundle at craftwithsarah.com forward slash HCC 23 bundle, which gives immediate and ongoing access to all of the files from the Halloween Craft Countdown, plus loads of extra bonus designs. All downloads come in zip folders. You will need to unzip them before you can upload the files into Cricut Design Space. Once you've downloaded and unzipped the folder from my website, it's time to upload the gargoyle into Cricut Design Space. Open up Design Space and start a new project and then click Upload over on the left and then Upload Image. You can then either click Browse to find a file on your computer or drag and drop it in. Make sure you choose the unzipped version of the folder and then the file to choose is the one which starts SVG in the file name. When you select it, it should look like this with all of the pieces one on top of the other. If yours looks different and you see all the bits next to each other instead, then that means you've accidentally uploaded the wrong file. So if that's the case, click cancel down here and try again and make sure you choose the one which starts SVG. But this one's looking good, so I'll click on Upload. And then in my recent uploads, I'll click it and press Add to Canvas. And this is how he looks. You can resize the gargoyle by clicking him. Make sure this padlock icon is closed. If it's open, you can click it to close it. And that means you can then type in either the width or the height. Press Enter on your keyboard and the other measurement will change in proportion. This gargoyle does use a lot of similar shades of grey cardstock, which might be a little tricky to get hold of. If you want to, you can try and play about with the layers so that it uses less. To do that, click Colour Sync over on the top right. And this lets you split it out by colour. So you can see there are three shades of grey in here at the moment. So it's not too bad, but if you want to try and play about and make it just two, then you can just drag the layers into the other shades of grey and it will change on the main picture here as you do it. For example, you see his face then goes to that lighter grey and then I might make this bit in his ears. Instead of being that dark grey, I could make it the lighter grey. Then I've got two of that dark left. Let's move that one into there. And this one would also, I guess, be lighter. And now he's just a two shades of grey gargoyle instead of three. So if you are struggling to find the three shades of grey, you can change it pretty quickly to get him to look like that. But I'm going to cut it as it came. So I'll just add that back in to get my third colour back. And I'll make him... A little bit bigger, 7.5 inches tall I think, and now he's ready for me to cut. If you want to cut him without the moon behind, you can do that too. 
To do that, scroll down to the bottom of the layers panel and you've got the two moon layers here. Just hover your mouse over them and click the eye icon that appears and that will hide them. But again, I'm doing mine exactly as it comes. So I'll turn those back on and then press make it. This separates out all the colors. You can change the paper size in here and also click and drag to move things about to use up less space on your cardstock. Make sure nothing overlaps when you're doing this, otherwise it won't cut out properly. You do need to do that for every single color. So once you've changed everything and you're happy with how it's looking, press continue to connect to your Cricut machine, follow the on-screen instructions to get everything cut from cardstock, and then we'll see how to stick together our kind of spooky but kind of adorable little stone gargoyle. Here is my grumpy little gargoyle all cut out from cardstock. And I've laid the pieces one on top of the other to check I'm happy with all the colours and that I haven't missed anything out. To stick them together, we're going to start at the bottom and work our way upwards. I'll be using a combination of glue and foam squares. The glue I use is called Kalal, which I really like because it doesn't bend or wrinkle the cardstock. And then I put it into these needle tip applicator bottles. And they're going to be especially helpful for this design because of all the thin pieces of grey. For the foam squares, I like this Dot and Dab brand, but any will do. If yours are big, you might need to cut them smaller with scissors, but these ones are quite small. All right, let's move all these pieces apart so we can start from the bottom. And I'm gonna try and keep them vaguely in the right order, just to make the next bit easier for myself. And then we're left with these two pieces for the moon behind the gargoyle. I've used two different types of gold. This one's kind of a matte gold. It's only a little bit shiny. And then on top of there for the mandala, I've got a real mirror gold. And unfortunately, my card already had some creases in it before I put it through the Cricut. But luckily, it's all going to get covered up exactly down that crease line so you won't notice. <laughs> I couldn't bear to throw it away. So I figured it would come in and it has. All right, we're going to start by gluing the detail layer of the moon onto the solid one underneath. And try and get around all these details with my needle tip applicator bottle to make sure it's stuck really well because this is going to have the weight of all the other pieces of card on it. Line that up. The nice thing about glue is you can wiggle it into place. And there we have it. So it doesn't show very well, I don't think, on the camera, but it does show that it's two different bits of gold in there. That looks lovely. <laughs> Sorry about my camera showing in that shiny top bit. Okay, next we've got biggest layer of grey which is this one and this is going to be a foam square layer. I'll turn it upside down and add my foam. You want to try and get your foam in all the little sticky out bits such as the top of the wings and the head and also a bit in his tail and then as well as going around the outside of the shape. You also want to make sure that there are some foam squares in the middle section because if there isn't and you left it with just foam around the edge there's nothing to keep it stable in the middle so the middle of your cardstock may drop down under the weight especially when it's got all the other bits on top. So don't just leave it like this, make sure you put some foam squares in the middle too. Now that I've got all these on there, I can peel the tops off to reveal the stickiness underneath. Great, time to stick this on. It's got a nice flat bottom to line it up against and also the outline of the wings. Because this is quite a big bit, I'm just going to get it into position 
and then gently drop it down without putting any pressure on it yet. And that means if I wasn't happy with the positioning, I can pick it up and move it because it hasn't actually stuck yet. But that's looking good to me. So let's push down to get it really well stuck. The next layer is the outline of the gargoyle's wings, which is going to be a glue layer. Next are the darker bits that make up the tops of his wings. And we'll start with this one. This is a foam layer because it's the same color as this one it's going on top of. So that shows that it's a foam square layer. Pull this one back in and then this will line up on top. And once again, just going to gently drop it down. Then when I'm happy, push to stick the foam. On top of this, we've got another outline layer. Here it is. This time I'm not brave enough to hold this over the design to put the glue on in case it drips over any of these tiny gaps. When card's white on the back, it's quite hard to see where to glue when you've got a white table. <laughs> right. Stick this one on. It's a bit fiddly because these wings are very narrow. I think I'll start with one and then drop the rest of it into place. Looking good. We've got his body next, his arms. And this one will be another foam layer. There's so much depth to this gargoyle, so it's going to look super realistic. Right, this one goes on there. Lovely. And then the detail on top. Having the different shades of grey really helps to see the details of everything through. So try and get the right amount if you can. Although I know sometimes it can be tricky finding lots of different shades of the same colour of cardstock. I'm going to try and be really careful not to smush the glue out the sides. Let's push down ever so lightly. We've got his feet in this darker grey and these I will foam on. I've just got a little string of glue in the middle I'm removing. You might need to cut your foam smaller for these little toes. Mine just about fits. There's his feet. And we've just got his head left now. You know what would be really cool would be if you cut the eyes from Glow in the Dark card, if that's a thing. I don't know if that exists. I know you can get Glow in the Dark vinyl. That might work. He'd be super creepy then when the lights went out and you could just see his glowing eyes. That one there. And next is the outline to his ears. There. Okay, next is the colour of his eyes. I went for the brightest green I could find. But glow in the dark would definitely be much cooler. Foaming this on there, and then we've got this layer next to show his eyes through, which will be glued. Now 
Next is this solid piece, which will again be foamed. You can kind of guess how this one's going. If it's a solid bit, it's foamed. If it's a detail bit, it's glued. Generally, that's how I do things, but just make sure to keep an eye either on this video or on the assembly guide that you get with this layered design and with all my layered designs, because sometimes it doesn't always go in the way you might expect. This one's a glue. Love his little grumpy face. <laughs> there we are. And now I've got his mouth. Again, solid piece, so we're going to foam it. And just on there. And then last detail bit for the mouth. Okay, there's only one piece left, which is his nose. I'm going to put my foam straight on here because this is quite a small piece of card. So I think that'll be easier. I just nudged that out of position. There we go. Here's his nose. Just carefully place that on. And there we go, our little grumpy gargoyle is all finished. He's got lots and lots of depth to him. And he's all ready to guard over your craft supplies this Halloween. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make a layered paper craft gargoyle for Halloween. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads small cricket crafts and Halloween fun. I hope to see you tomorrow for day 16 of the Halloween craft countdown. Don't forget the link to cut the cut files for today's project. It's craftwithsarah.com forward slash hcc23. But they're only free to download for 24 hours after this video goes live. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.